All right, welcome back again. Today what we're gonna talk about is number systems. Uh, so the number system you're obviously the most familiar with is decimal. Uh, so decimal, um, if you had a decimal number here, um, you could actually think of how it works by what each place, um, like how much value each place has. Um, so whether it's like 10 to the zero or 10 to the first, um, and then you could see what each one was and you can add it up um, and essentially get the same number back, right? Uh, but today we're going to be looking at um, other number systems, mainly binary, admittedly, because that's the one that computers need. Uh, we'll start with a little joke. Uh, I'll let you read it. All right, if you get it, then you probably fall into the first category. If you don't have any idea what that joke means, uh, you probably fall into the second category. Um, if you don't find it funny, that probably means you fall into either category because it's not really that funny. Uh, but there are one zero kind of people in the world. All right, so let's start off by talking about uh, the number system that you know best. Uh, this number system consists of symbols. Uh, let's just kind of pick a symbol here and say this symbol right here, I mean, you obviously know it as the number four. Um, it represents a quantity of that many, right? Um, if you pick another symbol, um, you know, let's just pick uh, <clears throat> the symbol here, which I'm sure you know is eight. Um, it represents that many. Um, and really that's all it is. It's just some symbol drawn in some crazy way that somebody picked a long time ago uh, that represents a quantity of things. And the other thing you need to know about a number system is that each location um, determines a multiplying factor. So the multiplying factor is um, the thing in the lowest location would be whatever the base is uh, raised to the power of zero. The next one would be, um, you know, times 10 raised to the power of 1, 2, and 3, right? So essentially, you can break this number down and say it's 3 times 1,000, 1 times uh, 100, 0 times 10, and 5 times, this is of course just 1, um, and you can back it out and you can get the number back, uh, 3,105. Whenever you're dealing with decimal, it's so easy that thinking about how it works is extra trouble. Uh, but thinking about how it works is important uh, for when you get to other number systems like binary. Uh, so binary only uses two symbols. Uh, you know them well. Um, zero represents no items and one represents uh, one item. Um, if, I, if you were watching Sesame Street, they would of course draw it in cookies or something like that. But it represents one entity of whatever it is you're talking about. Just like before, it uses uh, locations to determine the, the multiplying factor. It's hard for me to draw lines under all of them here. Uh, but whatever is in the, the far right um, is multiplied by whatever the base is, which in this case is two, because binary is a base two system. So it's a base two system raised to the power of zero, which is just one. Uh, two to the first power is two, uh, then four, uh, 8, 16, 32, 64, um, <clears throat> and then 128. Don't think about that for a second. Uh, so if you wanted to actually figure up what this number was right here, um, you would essentially have to add up the places uh, where there was a 1 there. So this would be 64 uh, plus 32, so that's what, 96. Um, there's 100, um, 102, 103. Um, and so that's how you convert, essentially, from binary uh, to decimal. Most of what this lecture is going to be is giving you a chance to practice. The concept is very easy, uh, but it takes a little while to practice um, and really get good at shifting from one base system to another. The reason binary is so important is because everything on a computer is either a 1 or a 0, right? The computer doesn't really understand the decimal system at all, like at a low level. Um, it uses everything as ones and zeros. And so it's important for you to understand binary um, so that you can understand any like eccentricities uh, that the computer might do for you. Counting in binary is fairly easy. Um, I mean, if you think about it, it's really just adding one to the previous number. Um, so, you know, if you had one one and you were to add one to it, um, you know, it would give you a uh, carry over there um, and you know it would give you that number there so it just kind of adds one um, as it counts down it forms a really elegant pattern if you look at it like this this column always toggles every time 
Um, the next column over, it's every two. Then the next column over is every four. It makes a nice pattern. Uh, see if you can take a minute and fill in the last couple. I'll do it too. All right, so I filled mine out. I uh, couldn't stay in the blue box. Um, but I mean, you can see that 12 is just 1100. Zero, zero. Um, you go down on and through, so you can see 15 is four ones. And then for 16, you need another uh, character, so another symbol to the far right. Uh, so it's pretty easy to count in binary. Again, it makes that nice, nice little pattern. Uh, let's go ahead and do a uh, practice one. Uh, so see if you can do this conversion uh, from a binary number into a decimal number. So take a minute and see if you can do it. All right, I'm going to actually go ahead and do it as well. All right, so uh, there's mine with kind of my work shown. Um, essentially what I did is I wrote the number uh, from the bottom to the top just because I knew it would make it a little bit easier. Um, so I just, you know, copied over uh, the zero to there. Ooh, that was kind of interesting. Um, and then the one um, and, you know, the other ones all the way up. Um, and so what I found is that I essentially had these numbers, um, you know, 2, 4, 8, 32, 128, and 256 that I had to add together. Um, and the answer was uh, 430, which is the title for this course. So hopefully when you got the number, you're like, ooh, I can do this. Um, so that's conversion in one way. So that's from binary to decimal. Uh, no surprise, we're going to have you do an example the other way. Uh, so take a minute and see if you can do this one. Okay, I'll go ahead and do it as well. All right, so I went ahead and did mine. Essentially, um, we didn't really talk about this much, but hopefully you just kind of figured up some way to do it. Um, there are clever ways to do it. Essentially, what I what I chose to do is I chose to write the numbers that would need to go in. Um, obviously, I could tell 64 wouldn't fit. Um, so I said, you know, 32, it does fit. So yeah, um, so I was going to have a 1 there, and then there was 10 left over. Um, into that 10, a 16 would not fit, uh, but an 8 would, so I knew I'd have an 8. Um, if I had put an 8 in, I would only have 2 left over, so obviously a 2 would fit there. Um, and so my answer is uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Uh, so the answer is uh, right there. I chose to prefix it with this 0B because that's what our, our programmer does whenever it refers to something in binary. It calls it a 0B101010. Uh, uh, so those are the, uh, the two major directions uh, that you've got to go. Uh, just to share, there are tools that you can use uh, to make your life a little bit easier. Um, so one is, of course, uh, Google. Um, so Google and Chrome, if you just were to if you just type 42 in binary, um, I mean, it would just tell you, right? So 1010101. Uh, likewise, you could do our other problem. Um, let's see, what was it? It was this, uh, well, I'd have to type the whole thing. Um, but you could go the other way. I don't feel like finding it, but I could say 0B, um, you know, some long number in decimal. Oh, there it is. Uh, so 430. Um, so obviously you don't want to always do these things by hand when you have tools available uh, to do it. Inevitably we will ask you a question on an exam to where you have to do it and it'll be during the closed computer part. Um, so you will have a calculator if your calculator can do these conversions either, easy. It'll be on an exam, right? Just, just bank on it. Um, but sometimes uh, you'll just want to convert it and you'll have whatever tools available to you. Um, Excel can also do these conversions just fine. MATLAB does these conversions just fine. They both use the function uh, des to bin or bin to des. Uh, they make it really easy. Uh, so Excel and MATLAB both do that. Um, there's probably a lot of calculators that can do it. I think Maple, I'm sure Maple can do these conversions just fine as well. To be honest, I use Chrome for any positive numbers. All right, so that's kind of the idea for binary. Uh, come back next time. We'll talk about hex. See you then.